Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters, and guys. <laughs> you may have noticed over the years that technology changes. It comes this way and then it moves that way. It gets smaller, it gets more sophisticated, it gets down to this, and now it's not even this. Now it's on the web. But you know, people are like that too. We human beings change, and we have to go from one step to the next, so we can't make the third step. I mean, we can't go to second grade until we first pass the first grade. And Toastmasters is just like that. There are predictable stages we go through, and I would like to share nine of them with you. Number one, the panic attack. When your mind goes blank, and you probably ask you to speak, and you can't think of anything to say, you can't even stand up. Or if you stand up to give a speech, your mind clears out and you don't know what you're there for. I have seen people stand at icebreakers, cry for five minutes. The very light turns green, they sit down and everyone applauds. All of those things are absolutely necessary, apparently, and predictable. And we all have them. So if you have a little disaster like that and it feels like a personal catastrophe, it's really a sign of growth. It's a something that you got done that you don't have to do again. That was number one in the nine necessary stepping stones to personal Toastmaster growth. Number two, talking too short, immediately followed by talking too long. <laughs> you, you have to do that. Number three, saying something stupid. Anybody ever felt bad because he said something stupid? <laughs> okay, all right. I think I hold the award for that because at a contest once, there were 300 people there. It was table topics. They asked me, speak to the issue, what animal represents Toastmasters? And I said, of course, the American turkey, a little bitty brain, big fat ass. <laughs> I did not win that contest. <laughs> It's one of those things, you, you have that happen, you think of something, you think it's funny or true, you can't stop it. It keeps coming up and you keep trying to push it down, but you know you can't, and it comes out your mouth. Number four, we all start in the same place. We start speaking up here. The locus of our body is up here, and our voices are kind of like this and strained that we talk from up here, and our gestures are in like this, and our gestures are like that. And if you watch these things in the past, you'll see how much you've changed. And what happens is that our locus of control, how we live in our bodies moves down until it gets down to this point. Down here. And then we get big sounds that bounce off the back of the wall. We do that because we speak from down here suddenly. Our bodies have shifted, our, our place where we live has shifted down to here. And we can suddenly speak from our bellies and make sounds. So where we live comes from up here and it goes down here and then it goes down to here, and then, oh my God, step number five, the dreaded shame attack. The shame attack, okay, now, it varies in various, <laughs> it hits in various places, and in our society, it's about sexuality. So, what I've seen, and the, the basis of the shame attack is that, oh my God, what if somebody <laughs> says something inappropriate? And it's panic. They go, <gasps> I have seen literally people quit this club because a, a, one of our members took off her blouse when she was giving a speech. <gasps> See? <laughs> oh, they, killed, oh, they, they, they run out the room, they call the police. It's a shame attack. Shame is very painful. And if you have one, acknowledge it and live with it. Or if you notice somebody around you's head suddenly caught fire, they're having the shame attack. Step number five, the shame attack. It happens all the time, especially at work. Number six, somebody doesn't like me. The truth is, when you go into a crowd of people that you don't know and you stand up and make some sounds, somebody will not like you. Somebody else will like you. Somebody will want to sleep with you. Somebody will want to poison your dog. And somebody else will want to sleep with your dog. <laughs> you don't have control over any of that. That just happens. And that was one of the first things that bothered me when I joined Toastmasters. And, and I looked like everybody's ex-husband. you know. And some people really didn't like me. And I had to come to grips with the fact that there are going to be people who don't like you for their own reasons. 
other than the fact that I'm very disagreeable. Number seven, you disagree with the evaluator. He said something awful about me. Get over it. That's necessary. You just take from an evaluation what you agree with and leave the rest. Number eight, disagree with the contest results. I should have won that contest. <laughs> Toastmasters contest winners have nothing to do with anything. On the area level, on the club level, on the division level, you do it for the growth and you just let it fly. That's just the way it is. And number nine, Number nine is when you get to the point and you look at these things and you look back and you say, boy, I'm a different person. Not only do I speak differently, but I live in my body differently. I have a different way of being in the world. And then you have to decide, is that a good thing or not? And some people say, ah! Some people say, this is a good thing. And I want to continue to do it. Some people then say, well, I got mine. I'm out of here, suckers. And they leave. Other people say, this is a good thing. This has changed my life for the better. I want to stay and help other people change their lives for the better. That's how you get to be an old-time Toastmaster. So that's step nine. They're not all inevitable, but the really embarrassing ones are. <laughs> And over a period of time, you'll see people quit clubs for little reasons that have something to do with a lot of these. One guy, I remember, came in, joined, and then he decided that they were all so stupid he could not stand in the same room with them. <laughs> so he quit. Well, okay, I understand that. <clears throat> all kinds of things happen in Toastmasters because it's not easy. It's not simple. It's not of the faint of heart. It takes courage and determination. It takes... What was the word? It takes courage. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> that's why we have to be in Toastmasters. So effervescent in our support because this is not an easy thing and most people wouldn't even consider it. Ladies and gentlemen, when you look at these, and I have one for everyone here, remember there are nine basic step, stepping stones to personal Toastmaster growth. Mr. Tabletop, Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs>